Cool. So we have uh, 23 minutes before lunch. Uh, I'm hoping that if we go a little bit over, it's okay. But I don't know. Is it a hard stop or? Okay. All right. Uh, so this talk is about uh, lazy RCU and memory. Uh, so uh, yeah, I'm excited to present. Uh, so about me. Uh, so I'm an RCU uh, co-maintainer. There's about like. Um, uh, four or five of us, uh, we you know work in, on different areas of RCU. Uh, I've worked on uh, several several RCU features over the years, uh, you know related to memory memory ordering, lazy RCU, uh, you know the RCU list APIs, and many uh, many bu many bug fixes over the over the over the last several years. Um, yeah, so there's an interesting backstory about how I got into this. So if you're interested in uh, hearing about it, let me know, and I can. Uh, tell you how I got into it. Uh, so it's been about like seven, seven to eight years since I, uh, you know, I, I started working on this stuff. And I also work at Google uh, on performance and power in the Chroma team. I was working on Android before that. Uh, and you know, my website has all the information about me if you're interested in in checking it out. So the goals of this talk are is is to make everyone aware of the. Um, of the uh, the lazy RCU uh, feature, and uh, you know maybe it will help your use case, hopefully. Um, and also, I, w I would like to ask for feedback from the MM community on on different issues that we have. Uh, uh, and yeah, we can make it in interactive, uh, you know. But yeah, because we're already short of time, let's keep like uh, the uh, you know the unimportant questions in in the end. So we'll start with the background of lazy RCU. So the the observation that uh, I had like about two years ago is when a system is mostly idle, um, most most RCU callbacks don't need to run like right away. They can be delayed for seconds or as, as long as it as long as needed. Um, and uh, so, uh, yeah, what I observed was that some callbacks they they tend to trickle. And there's like uh, you know every few uh, uh, you know few tens or hundreds of milliseconds you have callbacks that are constantly trickling uh, for uh, lightweight uh, you know when there's lightweight activity and this uh, this tends to disturb the idle CPUs that uh, uh, you know uh, that, that that would like to be idle but they're they're constantly getting disturbed and it confuses the SOC's power management features as well. Uh, you know the SOC thinks that the the SO, uh, that the system is active, and so it doesn't go into this SOC wide deep state. That's what we observed, um, and, and this uh, behavior is independent of memory. So even if you have tons of memory on the system, it it will still uh, you know it'll still happen. So we're kind of doing work when we don't need to, and that was that was the kind of the point about like how do we make this a little more lazy. Um, and some examples of workloads are like uh, we we notice Android logging, Chrome OS video playback. Uh, uh, you know these are like lightweight activities uh, that we're doing a lot of RCU. Uh, in the video playback case, they have uh, the, these uh, graphics buffers that use the open and close syscall, and that triggers RCU as well. So. Uh, and so I wrote this tool uh, just to kind of see what's going on system from an RCU standpoint it's based on BPF uh, and refreshes every five seconds and uh, shows, uh, you know, callbacks that are that are queued and executed. And this is sort of a, how I got an idea about, okay, how bad bad is this and, and are we doing work that we maybe don't need to. So uh, how, how does this uh, work? So the, the, the main idea is, uh, you know, we need to avoid going to to RCU. So um, I came up with different, uh, you know, revisions of, of making this work. And uh, you know, uh, every time I came up with a different version, it, it kept breaking some corner case. So finally, uh, I settled with an approach where um, I observe, uh, I discovered that uh, the uh, that RCU already has this per CPU list called the bypass list. And so let's talk about what the bypass list was. Already used for, uh, so say we have a, a system with two uh, two CPUs, and you know consider that time is uh, time is flowing as as shown there in the arrows, uh, and each CPU has a has its own callback list uh, where you know when you queue, when you uh, request RCU for uh, 
it services, you, you queue a callback, and that gets saved in that list. So the thing is, um, in, a, in, a, in a, some configurations of RCU, it is possible that the callbacks are queued on one CPU and invoked on another CPU. So to synchronize this, there is a, uh, there's a lock, uh, locking that happens, and that can add a lot of lock contention. Uh, and this can cause performance overhead uh, due to frequent, uh, you know, callback queuing uh, and, and so forth and invocation. And so there, there's this list called the bypass list that was added, where uh, that, and that's a per CPU list as well. Uh, and the callbacks basically, if there are a lot of callbacks getting queued into the uh, into the main list, then it triggers this uh, bypass uh, where the new callbacks will now go into the bypass list and it will relieve the, the lock contention that uh, happens on the main list. And obviously we can't keep it in the bypass list forever, so uh, the eventually the uh, bypass uh, callbacks will have to be flushed back into the, the main callback list. Uh, there's many, there's uh, different uh, uh, situations where we have to do this flushing. One is a, there's a timer which goes off once enough time has passed and we now want those uh, you know, callbacks to uh, make progress. There's RCU barrier, which makes sure that all RCU callbacks before the barrier uh, uh, you know, were, were executed uh, up, uh, before the barrier completes. And then there's also, if the bypass list is too long, then we, you know, we don't wanna keep filling up the bypass list and we might eventually run out of memory. So if there's a check where if it's too long, we flush it as well. Uh, so yeah, so my my idea was like let's just use the same bypass list for the lazy callbacks, um, and uh, you know doing this, uh, I observed that we were saving like on these low uh, CPU utilization use cases, we're saving like 10 to 20 percent uh, power even uh, compared to without this feature. So the the whole RCU activity was uh, you know causing issues, and and doing it this way uh, helps us save power. Um, and yeah, the the uh, you know the changes from the bypass mechanism were uh, the timer now goes off uh, only after 10 seconds if the callbacks are lazy, and we could reuse all the other code in the bypass mechanism to to do this stuff. Also, if any non-lazy uh, RC callback is uh, is queued, we flush all the lazy ones because there's no point if we're triggering RC anyway. We uh, might as well. Uh, uh, you know, uh, take care of the, the lazy callbacks as well. So that's another situation where we do this sort of uh, flushing. Okay, so, so far, hopefully it's clear uh, how it works and all that. Any questions so far? Comment? All right. So now the memory reclaim part. Uh, the current implementation for, uh, you know, if there's stuff in the in the bypass list, we have a shrinker mechanism that uh, that is used to see if the the system is uh, you know requires memory back, and if that's the case, we flush all the lazy callbacks. Uh, uh, and this is what the shrinker implementation looks like. The count function goes through all the CPUs and adds the you know the number of lazy callbacks on each CPU, and then we return the count. And the the scan function looks like that. Um, the main thing here is, uh, you know, we're told how many uh, how many objects, uh, you know, we uh, are 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 uh, are required to be uh, to be freed, and uh, we use that to uh, we go over each first each uh, CPU list, and uh, as as soon as we um, run out of uh, callbacks to uh, move forward, we uh, you know we break out of the loop. So it's pretty simple. Uh, and this mechanism is terrible, like for uh, for detecting memory pressure. There's many issues with it, and this is where I, I want your guys like input. Um, like, so first of all, RCU doesn't really know how much memory per ob uh, is stored in per object. Uh, we all we're doing is we're dealing with uh, functions. Like we have to run a function after a grace period, um, and also in the traditional sense and Object is, you know, with these shrinker mechanisms, and correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, they uh, they typically do this caching of objects for 
performance reasons because they might you know need the object later. So when the shrinker gets called, they can just okay, we can't cache them anymore. But with RCU, it's more like garbage collection. So uh, you know, and uh, the other thing is uh, you know we are going through each CPU and flushing all the lazy callbacks. So we may oftentimes scan more uh, you know free more objects or move more callbacks forward than than requested. And the scan doesn't really free memory immediately. Um, it triggers grace period. So if a grace period takes very long, then we're kind of lying to the system that we, are, we return these objects when the grace period hasn't even completed. So the, the shrinker is a terrible mechanism. We're mainly using it for detecting memory pressure, and there's no better way that we found of doing that. And the, the whole shrinker batches mechanism actually can make more RCU work, do more work. And again, correct me if I'm wrong, but the shrinker mechanism, the batches in the shrinker is because uh, the shrinker wants to do uh, a certain amount of work uh, in batches. Uh, and that, the idea there is that instead of doing a lot of work at once, we can split it in batches and do it a little at a time. But actually, that for RCU, that might mean more work because for every batch, batch we might trigger a, a new grace period. So it's it's not ideal. So what what can we do that is is uh, better than the shrinker? Um, is VM pressure a better signal? Can we use that? Or because this is an old topic that I think came up in many uh, conferences. One thing that it's not really clear to me is uh, uh, you try to uh, delay um, uh, callbacks as much as possible, but uh, uh, that means that it might be a lot of memory sitting in callbacks just to be freed, right? And you don't want to system go and struggle yep. based on that. So uh, I don't think that shrinker is something that will help you all that much because we proactively reclaim for reasons that are not even remotely close to be out of memory. So maybe something that uh, would help is just to hook into the page allocator path okay. where we start struggling. So for example, we have several stages of hot and, and slow paths. Okay. And, and for example, we have that should reclaim retry thing that checks how much hard we should try really because that okay. might be a, an atomic op no, allocation that okay. So, so maybe that would be a better entry point for you. Uh, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. It's, okay, um, I'll check it, yeah. And, and then I, I think that what you want to do is just to flush everything, right? Uh, you don't want to be very particularly uh, yeah, like picky that. about whether a subset of CPUs or uh, is that something that would help or? Uh, uh, yeah, I think so. Uh, typically, uh, yeah, the, the uh, RCU work that that it has to do if we flush everything is ab about the same. It's that it's that we might execute more callbacks than we'd like, like because we have the option of only flushing a part of it, right? Like I'm showing in the in the scan function, we break out of the of the scan loop af after the, you know the shrinker gets a count, and we only uh, try to uh, uh, satisfy th the number that we're given. But yeah, but once you're doing that work, uh, does it matter just to do a subset of that work just to be woken up later because that memory yeah. pressure keeps adding up? Also, uh, does it help to distinguish between case of D and uh, and direct reclaim? Because case of D is not local, so maybe you don't want to free or uh, call callbacks that are distant to that uh, NUMA node. Th that's not really clear to me. Uh, yeah, we don't con do any NUMA considerations at all. Uh, yeah, so callbacks that are queued on that uh, first CPU list are not necessarily freeing up memory for that particular node. Yeah, correct. Or that CPU. Okay, so yeah. then, then doing anything we really uh, per CPU specific might be completely um, um, yeah. misleading yeah. for the reg for the memory reclaim process. Okay, so maybe it's just just try to flush everything because once there is a need for memory, then just okay, okay. I'll look into that. Thank you, um, Joel. Yeah, the, the other option is sorry. Right. The other option is to just 
we were thinking like if the system is struggling like all the time, we just have some heuristic that turns this off completely. Uh, that's another option. So we don't do lazy at all if you know things are are really bad. Some kind of exponential back off heuristic type of thing. Yeah, yeah, just keep in mind that there are workloads that are uh, reclaiming all the time. Like uh, okay. you have a page cache, um, IO stream kind of workload that is just putting memory in and just to reclaim it from the tail because uh, that memory will not be used again. And that can just m make the reclaim happening all the time. Also, there are people doing proactive reclaim. Okay, I see. Yeah. So. All right. Okay, I'll look into that. It'll be fun. Um, Joe, uh, yeah, one question. So you are flashing the RCU callbacks because you suspect that some of them are like uh, RCU free, free RCUs or something like this, which basically keep keeps the memory. Yeah, they might be pinnings. Okay. Uh, they might be having you know memory that we need to give back to the system. Right. So maybe the maybe somehow annotate those RCU callbacks which are actually going to free memory. We like we have no idea who uh, people. But you use have API, right? Free RCU, for example, is an API where where usually it frees the memory. Okay, free RCU. Yeah, I'll be talking about that. But the regular RCU people use the regular call RCU API to free memory as well. The, it might maybe provide some and I'm told some interface to, to tell them that yeah. this RCU actually is going to free memory. So, but I mean, don't all RCU. 99% of RCU callbacks end up freeing memory? No, there's some of them do wake ups and people use it for all kinds of use cases. Yeah, there's they use it in locking as well where they try to switch from slow path to fast path. Uh, there's all kinds of crazy, like you're right, most of the use cases are for freeing memory. And that's why this makes sense. Like, so we had to find out those few use cases that don't free memory and use a new API for those and everybody else becomes lazy. So that, that turned out to be much better than converting everyone. So um, yeah, and then um, other ideas, uh, like if we can somehow get feedback from the memory subsystem that you know executing callbacks did something to memory, maybe we can use such a signal in some way, although that's probably very difficult to, to implement. Oh, the uh, the other thing I wanted to ask you guys is uh, the shrinker scan function. Since we're like f like we'll look into the allocator and all that, but uh, the shrinker itself, since we're not really freeing objects, should we just return zero? Because I'm I'm told some shrinkers they just even though they're doing something about memory, they just return zero because they're not really freeing a certain number of objects. Is, will that make the shrinker? mechanism behave better in some way? No? So we just, okay. So it looks like we should just get rid of the shrinker completely and do something better, okay. All right, so the, the last part is uh, K-free RCU. So K-free RCU is similar to RCU lazy, but it's for pointers. So with K-free RCU, we know for sure that we're freeing memory because the, the API gets uh, gets a pointer. Uh, and uh, this can this API can be used for both slab allocated objects as well as vmalloc objects, uh, and uh, we also have support now for uh, calling this API. We had to rename it to something else so that people wouldn't shoot themselves in the foot. But there's an option where your object doesn't even need an RCU head anymore, and we'll take care of allocating memory uh, to, uh, you know, to do tracking and stuff like that. Um, so uh, th this is very useful for objects that are really small, like where you don't want to waste space for the RCU head, you can just call this API, but uh, it's important to keep in mind that it will, it, it may sleep. So this whole K-free RCU mechanism, uh, I worked on the initial patch, I think three years ago or something, and then Vlad Dresky, took over and uh, he did a great job. He built it and improved it and all this stuff. So thank you, Vlad. Um, and how does this work? So basically we have, uh, uh, this is a simplified diagram. We have a free list and a busy list. And uh, in the free list is basically uh, a, a list of pages. Um, and 
uh, every time you call k free rc we put a we we take the pointer of the object and we put it in in the page and uh, when we run out of uh, pointers in a page we we go to the next page in the list and so we we have some pre allocation logic that allocates these pages and uh, uses them uh, as needed and um, we have timers that uh, flush the uh, the the flush the free list to the busy list so it it kind of goes like that and um, and then we wait for a grace period. So after we wait for a grace period, we call k-free bulk. So that's the big advantage of this is like we can pass the the page of pointers to k-free bulk to free uh, objects. Uh, uh, this is supposed to be more optimal than free uh, calling k-free on on each uh, pointer. So that's basically how it works. Um, the advantage of this is we have like nice cache locality, like we don't need to go over uh, like, you know, a, a chain of uh, objects, uh, you know, because linked lists have uh, terrible, uh, you know, cache locality, so we can, uh, we can avoid that because we're dealing with like a page of pointers. We can use the k-free bulk APIs, as I said. And the disadvantages of this scheme are uh, k-free RCU uh, is, might sleep, uh, is not that great. Why? Um, it may allocate uh, when we are freeing. It's kind of weird that we we uh, we have to allocate uh, when we're trying to free uh, uh, free memory. And if uh, we are careful that if the allocation fails, we call synchronize RCU. But we don't sleep in the allocator. Uh, we instead uh, call synchronize RCU, and that um, uh, that's horrible. But it's uh, it only supposed to happen in very extreme cases. Uh, sh the shrinker has similar disadvantages that I'm, we mentioned, but at least we know that at least we know that in the k-free RCU case we are freeing memory. Uh, in the case of the regular RCU, we have no idea. So uh, maybe you know maybe we can do something better here. Um, so I was uh, I was actually doing research and thinking like it would be great if this uh, at least for slab objects if we could integrate. Uh, uh, RC you into the slab itself. Um, and uh, I was living in a fantasy world for a few days when I was researching this. <laughs> um, and I was very disappointed that, uh, that it, it's much harder than I, than I thought. So in an ideal uh, world, uh, you know, if we could make the slab start and stop grace periods until, until it really needed, and this is what FreeBSD does, by the way, uh, it it uh, does. It has it has integrated uh, uh, RCU into their their version of RCU into their version of Slab. Um, and the the nice thing about this is maybe when the Slab decides that it needs to do uh, it needs to do something about R RCU freed objects, a grace period might have already passed, so it doesn't even need to go to RCU. Like we have mechanisms now in RCU where. Uh, we, uh, there's APIs where you can query RCU about, okay, has a grace period passed between point A and B? Um, but yeah, uh, so I was looking, in, uh, looking into Slub and I was pretty disappointed that Slub actually uses uh, free lists, explicit free lists, where they, they modify the, uh, the object uh, with, with, you know, with a pointer in the beginning that points to the next free object. And uh, how on earth can we, <laughs> Like, you know, if we RC free an object and then we modify it and there's a reader that is accessing it, there's no way we can make that work. So, any uh, big ideas on? But even if that wasn't the case, uh, we, we wouldn't be able to just put the, put the objects into the free list because then somebody might allocate them before the grace period passes. So yeah, we would so have to still, still somehow manage that. That's true, but if we could, so the idea was like, if there was some way that uh, slab, slab, whatever was doing for or some, had some metadata on every object, then we could store some information there saying that, you know, this is not, this object is not ready yet. Um, but unfortunately it looks like hard to do with, uh, we're not, I mean, we, we can't touch the object, right? Uh, until. Yeah, I, so the slab, slab actually doesn't have this problem uh, because with slab you have an array that 
points to the free objects. Yeah, yeah but if, if you would put that into the array again, somebody might allocate it right away. Unless, yeah, but the array could have some metadata. Yeah, you could have some metadata, so. I think for the for the flag slap uh, RCU type safe caches, we actually do add some uh, extra header for this, if I remember mm -hmm. correctly. But these are caches created in advance with this flag, and if we would start to do it in all the KMLOC caches, suddenly they wouldn't be so nicely aligned. And uh, yeah, and I, I'm responsible for making this alignment actually a, a documented property. And so if, if we edit this header, it would uh, blow, blow the yeah. usage because of the alignment, but. Yeah, and, yeah but we, and we don't want to do this for objects that are not RC free. So it should be, I mean, we shouldn't affect use cases that don't need this, right? That's the other hard part. Yeah, but uh, there might be another reasons why we might consider adding the arrays to slop that I will present later today. So maybe okay. this would be another use case also. Oh, wow, okay, wonderful. But then if you have an array, the nice thing about this architecture of slop is you can have any number of objects, right? Like, there's no limit. I mean, you have the page as a limit, but with slab, if I understand, you, because it's an array, you, you might run out of slots. Yeah, and then the you have to flush it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah, let's talk more about that. Um, yeah, if we could pull this off, uh, we don't need a separate shrinker. The slab will decide it's shrinking. But as Mikkel was saying, uh, maybe we can just do, add support in the memory uh, subsystem for, for doing that. Um, yeah, there's no need to, uh, these are all the advantages I already mentioned of K-free RCU. Um, but, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, this is the advantage of the, the slab uh, integration if we were to do that. Like, we don't need a separate, K, you know, there's a lot of code in K-free RCU. Uh, we don't need to have, you know, the pages and filling them with pointers and all that. If you could just tell slab, hey, this is this is a free request, but by the way, this is an RCU free request then that would get rid of all this code that we have on, to, on the top of the, the slab stuff. Uh, and might be faster because the, maybe the slab can just drop the whole page or something if it was you know, full of stuff that was RC free, I don't know. Um, there, there would also be no, probably no need of our, an RCU head because uh, you know, we're telling the slab that this is the object we need RCU freed and, and the slab will take care of freeing it. Um, Whereas right now with the k RC code, we have an RCU head in, in uh, every object. Disadvantage is it increases the slab complexity. Uh, it does not apply to freeing vmalloc objects uh, because in, in the k-free co RCU code, it's actually called kv-free RCU. There's uh, like uh, macros that define the, the same API more than once. And so this mechanism can also free uh, vmalloc objects. So, oh yeah. You mean, okay, okay, thank you. Um, yeah, maybe other disadvantages, I don't know, but cool. So yeah, thanks a lot. Uh, yeah, the lazy RC feature, I'm hoping that it will be useful for other people, like there's people on the cloud side and data centers and stuff who are also interested in saving power. So maybe, uh, so this is available in 6.2 uh, kernel onwards. So yeah, maybe it can help others as well. So just a question. Uh, do, do I need to do invoke RCU some special way to use the lazy or what's the API? No, so yeah, we uh, last LPC we got this very good feedback from Thomas Kleixner saying don't introduce new, new APIs and confuse kernel developers. So we made this completely tra like in the existing call RCU me uh, mechanism. So you're, it's, it's, the laziness kicks in automatically without any, uh, but we had to add a new API for all these people who are not freeing memory and wanted their callbacks to run like really quickly. Uh, so that's, thing called, co that's called call RCU hurry. Yeah, I, didn't I, I, didn't, I didn't choose that name. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> I was thinking it, it was expedited, but it's something else. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. So uh, could you go back to the um, memory requirement page, please? Um, I got a request from uh, some GPU box and okay. uh, they find the current Slab Shrinker API insufficient. Uh, what they want is um, um, they want VM scan to export two generation numbers. Uh, one is the uh, youngest generation number, the other is the oldest one. And uh, uh, <laughs> you're not out of the page. So, so um, which, which page exactly? Uh, memory claim. So um, basically, uh, they want to, uh, no, 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 uh, memory reclaim. Memory reclaim, that's, that's the, that's this. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm sorry, I, I have no, yeah, maybe we can. So, uh, yeah, basically what they want to do is, um, the, 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 I think they have a similar problem. Basically, they um, can't compare uh, GPU memory objects uh, with uh, uh, the host, you know, memory in terms of hotness and coldness. And uh, what they want to do is they want to put uh, sort, uh, put the uh, um, recent GPU memory into the uh, youngest generation. And uh, when the host uh, starts reclaiming, then the host will notify this GPU driver that, oh, okay, I'm reclaiming this generation, right? Anything older than this generation should be gone, removed. Okay. So this way, they uh, won't, they wouldn't over reclaim. Also, they can sort their internal uh, objects using the uh, ho the uh, you know VM yeah. scan generation numbers. So yeah, I'm wondering like whether they're gonna um, it would be uh, helpful to your use case. Yeah, the thing yeah. is, like, we don't care about hardness or coldness because, like, Miko was saying, uh, you know, we, it's better to flush everything, right? Because we're not re we're not really caching in the in the sense yes, it's not objects. You are you don't want to flush everything, you know, unnecessarily, right? Unnecessarily, uh, right? You want to so if if let's like, say the memory pressure is not that uh, bad, you probably want to delay it. Yeah. 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 Right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. All right.